Scary TikToks that will make you rethink your reality with Jet Ski Chuck. Lord of the Rings, and Saturn is Lord of the Rings. This is why women were told in the ancient world to listen to their God, and the concept was they would wear an ear ring. Men were to get married before their gods, they wear a wedding ring, because the old ancient God of the Middle East, one of the ancient gods of the Middle East, uh, was the planet Saturn. Saturn was t directly connected to Yahweh, the Hebrew God. And so this is why even today the Jews celebrate the worship of Saturn. Saturn in the old Phoenician language was called Shabbat. Look up in the Phoenician language, you will find that the planet Saturn was called Shabbat. And his, his worship to honor him once a week was called Sabbath. So when, when the Jews are having Sabbath, they're actually paying homage to their god Saturn. Lord of the Rings. And so when you start breaking down where religions have come from, theologies have come from, the six-pointed star, for instance, is, not, is called the Star of David. Actually, it's not the Star of David. All the encyclopedias and reference works will tell you that it's called the Star of Saturn. It is a hexagram. Hexagrams represented the planet Saturn. So and then when you look at the Christian system of things, uh, the church is a, is a disgrace, in my opinion, period. The Christian church is a disgrace. Everything, everything that comes out of the Christian church in America is a disgrace. It's filled with lies, deception, innuendos. It is a money-making corporation. The black cube of Saturn, also known as the Saturnian cube, has captivated the curiosity and imagination of many particularly within esoteric and conspiracy theories. This enigmatic symbol is closely associated with the planet Saturn and has garnered diverse interpretations and beliefs across various cultures and belief systems. In esoteric traditions, the black cube is regarded as a representation of Saturn's energy or a cosmic force linked to the planet's characteristics. It is often perceived as a symbol shrouded in mystery, embodying occult power and the veiled realms of hidden knowledge. The cube's dark color is frequently associated with Saturn's association with darkness, time, and the shadow aspects of existence, hinting at profound meanings. The association of the black cube with Saturn can be traced back to religious and mythological contexts as well. In ancient Babylonian culture, the deity Ninurta, or Marduk, was symbolized by a black cube, signifying its divine essence and power. Furthermore, in Islamic tradition, the Kaaba, the revered structure located in Mecca is a large black cube-shaped building. Considered the holiest shrine in Islam, it serves as the central focal point for Muslims during the Hajj pilgrimage. The Kaaba's black color and cubic shape have forged connections with the concept of the black cube, as both inspire awe and reverence within their respective religious contexts. Beyond religious and esoteric associations, the black cube has also attracted attention in conspiracy theories. It is occasionally depicted as a symbol of control, manipulation, and occult influence wielded by secretive elite groups. These theories often interweave the black cube with notions of global power structures, secret societies, and alleged hidden agendas. However, it is important to approach these theories with discernment, recognizing the distinction between factual information and speculative claims. In esoteric and occult traditions, the black cube assumes deeper significance. It is viewed as a symbol of mystery, power and transformation, representing the realm of hidden knowledge and the material dimensions of existence. The cube's three-dimensional nature also symbolizes the interplay of opposing forces and the intricate dimensions of physical reality. It is often associated with the seeker's spiritual journey, illuminating the path towards self-discovery and transcendence. The allure of the Black Cube's enigma extends far beyond its various associations. It has sparked profound contemplation and imaginative speculation, drawing connections and inspiring theories that transcend cultural and historical boundaries. 
Some theorists delve into the realms of ancient civilizations and mythologies, seeking to uncover hidden truths and mystical wisdom embedded within the black cube's symbolism. They explore the ancient Babylonian traditions, where the cube represented the divine essence of powerful deities. By examining the significance of the Kaaba in Islam, they unravel the spiritual significance of the black cube as a focal point of devotion and the embodiment of sacred unity. Conspiracy theories surrounding the black cube venture into the realm of secrecy and power. They suggest that elite groups or clandestine organizations employ the symbol as a representation of their hidden influence, manipulating global events and orchestrating secret agendas. While it is essential to approach these theories critically and with a discerning eye, they attest to the captivating nature of the black cube and its potential to evoke intrigue and speculation. Esoteric and occult traditions regard the black cube as a conduit for transformative experiences and spiritual enlightenment. Its dark facade symbolizes the journey into the depths of the self and the exploration of hidden knowledge. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Jesse Chuck. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button. And if you want more of these videos, activate all notifications. We're diving into Space Nine territories today. So make sure you got that sword and shield and we're going to cut through this galaxy. Now follow me. Let's get into it. Saturn Conspiracy. There's a few weird things about Saturn. One is that its rings actually sing and make a sound frequency that sounds like this. Another weird thing is that it has a giant crazy hexagon on the north pole of the planet that sometimes emits aurora. I also recently found this interesting theory about how Earth may have once orbited Saturn. It's called the Saturn myth, and the idea is that Earth, along with Mars and Venus, was once a satellite of Saturn before a major cataclysm happened and caused the planets to now orbit the Sun. This theory is only based on ancient mythology about a golden age of humanity where there was a once advanced civilization that witnessed these drastic changes in our sky, but only a few survivors made it and passed this story down through generations. Now there's almost no evidence to back this up, and some do consider it pseudo-history, but I think it's a pretty interesting idea. What do you guys think? The king would be crowned before Saturn. Saturn would be the round crown or the corona, the ring. We know that Saturn was referred to as L, E L. L is a name that was given to the planet Saturn. And therefore, if you were worshiping Saturn, you represent the law, you are referred to in church today as an L. When you look at crop circles or snowflakes, that is purely a picture that represents the sound of the environment. Now, when you take sound that has been recorded from the rings of Saturn, and you take sound from the inside of crop circles, they are an exact pitch for pitch match. The, the rings of Saturn are being used as, as guitar strings, and they are transmitting within an hour and a half messages within sound and Damn. Stonehenge, which is a crystalline aerial, which is aligned to Saturn in the planetsphere, is taking that and it is creating a picture that represents that sound. And that is why the majority of crop circles are around Stonehenge. Somebody said to, to, to me once, uh, I created this crop circle and I said to them, how did you encrypt diatonic ratios? And they couldn't answer me because they didn't do it. Yeah. Now, diatonic ratios are basically non-natural sound frequencies that are found in crop circles. When you take a sort of audio, advanced audio equipment, and you take away the sound from the crop circles and you mimic that on the machine, it's the same picture as a crop circle. So the picture is sound. That was incredibly interesting. He said Saturn's rings was used as guitar strings to enhance the sound vibrations. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're in deep waters nine. Let's see what else they got for us. Display as lights danced in the sky in Ontario. Twitter has been illuminated. Ring display as lights danced in the sky in Ontario. Twitter has been illuminated with gorgeous pictures of the Northern Lights because so many people were able to see the rare sight. Look at these photos of the sky in downtown Toronto last night. 
The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration issued a geomagnetic storm watch from March 23rd to the 25th. This storm, without getting too sciency, is what made the Northern Lights visible in places that aren't Northern at all, like Iowa and Southern Ontario. Sky gazers and shutterbugs delighted in the sight, Mother Nature really showing off and leaving many in wonder. I don't give a piss about nothing but the tide, baby! I don't give a piss about nothing but the tide! Blitz, Bama, Blitz, baby! Blitz, Bama, Blitz! I love America and I love the tide, baby! And I love uh, Will and Adele! Yeah, right, I don't love the tide! Don't give a piss about the tide! The tide go get them! The tide go no, take them down! No, 24 to 17! He had to grab him off the mic. Oh, my God. What is rising from our oceans? <laughs> I've got to admit, guys, this video. What is rising from our oceans? <laughs> God, now, as the planet Saturn was the former sun. In fact, the references to the earlier sun, the same names were transferred to the present sun, Helios, Ra, Sol, all referred originally to Saturn. As a brown dwarf, uh, we've tended to call that brown dwarf Proto-Saturn because Proto-Saturn was changed on entry into the solar system to become the ringed planet Saturn. If you look at the early Babylonian astronomical texts, for example, Saturn will be called Shamash, their name for the sun. And interestingly, the same thing shows up in the Greek text where Helios is identified with Saturn. Same thing in Egypt, same thing in Rome. What we regard now as the planet Saturn was the former sun. You know, NASA tell us we have four giants, uh, gas giants, uh, would be Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus. Our, what they call gas giants, are thriving planets with civilizations on them and all kinds of stuff going on, particularly Saturn. Mm -hmm. And Saturn has the rings around it that Norman Bergeron wrote, the ring makers of Saturn found the big spaceships right. orbiting inside the rings. All kinds of stuff is going on. With Saturn, what are those rings made out of? You know, I don't know, but Saturn is probably one of the most important uh, planets in our solar system. And Lou Baldwin, who I talk to all the time, has written the books about space and UFOs. He said that if you were to look at the surface of Saturn from a planet a little ways away, he said, all you have to do is to look at it for five seconds and you would faint for about a day. It would be so overwhelming that you would literally faint. Because of structures or because of the he races? He not elaborate. He, says what, he said, what you see overwhelming. would be overwhelming that you would lose consciousness. Mm -hmm. I had read some papers classified that said that there is these, uh, a portal there on the poles that the ETs used to come in and out of, and that um, it's a very popular spot in our solar system, I'll say. We have portals all over Earth, but they right. change position all the time. You know, NASA tell us we have four giants, uh, gas. I'm going to give you a secret. Nothing in this world is what you think it is. Planet Saturn in the ancient world was called Lord of the Rings. Wow. Well, he is Lord of the Rings. And so women were told in the ancient world to listen to their God, so they would wear a ring. Men were to get married before their God, so they wear a wedding ring. Because Saturn was Lord of the Rings. He represents government, banking, the police department, all kinds of institutions that are powerful that can hold you back. He was the inhibitor. I'm going to give you a secret. Nothing. When you look at crop circles or snow. And what they use, the uh, gang stalkers use magnetics. Gang stalking, that sounds familiar. We got to dive into this to read your mind but this is where they hijack it they hijack it at the optic nerve and what they use to hijack your mind they have to use just like an MRI uses magnetic resonance to scan your brain um, there's two uses to cell phone cell phone towers they don't tell you this cell phone towers have magnetics 
that can read your brain your brain these extreme low frequencies have magnetics that can read your mind if they can read the optic nerve in your head and with so a gang stalker can get one of these to read your mind and then it will relay the signal back to the gang stalker's cell phone and the gang stalker can can watch your thoughts can watch what you see on your cell phone say if you're the gang stalkers can watch you having sex through your eyes or your girlfriend's eyes and some more of this technology Damn. that can read your mind that the gang stalkers use it's um remember how i said the mri is magnetic resonance this is tempest this uses magnetics to transient electromagnetic pulse emanation standard to intercept electromagnetic waves over the air it even stiffs signals emanating from computer screens so um these gang stalkers have technology in their phones where they can read your computers they can scan your cell phones they can do all this shit and see how this tempest these your computer oh man just let me read this one more time it says here any electric electronic or electro electrical device emits electromagnetic radiations of specific key when it's operated so they with technology they can read your information on a computer they can see what you're doing on a computer they can hear what you're talking on a phone or they can read your thoughts because your brain emits an electric electromagnetic radiation and remember how I said the human eye this optic nerve it sends electrical radiation to the brain and they they steal the electrical signal from the optic nerve to your eye and that's how they read your mind and gang stalkers have this technology and I want to show some more of it here's some more technology when they're reading people's minds this whole and it all starts off with the MRI but the MRI you have to get real close but they have very powerful technology that can read your mind too this was they used to probably a while ago you used to have one of these in the back of your car to read someone's mind a temp an echelon and tempest magnetic reader but the te technology is advanced so much you can read someone's mind through a cell tower all you need is magnetics and your computer uses magnetics and what you don't realize they can read your mind through your through your computer so so let me show you this right here you see this person on his computer this computer reads your mind okay when you're on your cell phone the cell phone can read your mind all right if you're by any electronic device by a camera it's reading your mind and what happens an artificial intelligence is reading people's minds through electronics and um so when you're on your cell phone your mind is being read and everything you do think see or hear is getting sent by one of these computers and it's getting scanned by an artificial intelligence so our brains are being read by electronics and they're being scanned by an artificial intelligence the government is reading our minds and these gang stalkers are reading our minds by these massive supercomputer data centers everything we do everything we think is being recorded in one of these and you didn't know this but inside all the Freemasons houses the Freemasons and all their families have technologies to watch you so if you know a Freemason they're probably reading your mind and doing weird shit like this and watching your family so don't hang around with the Freemasons and I already told you about Tempest and Echelon when the electronics read your mind it's all scanned through a data center and sometimes when you have the gang stalkers sitting in their van sometimes they're watching you reading your mind in their van and it's not done with telepathy magic it's done with electronics just like I showed you the MRI and this tech oh man I wish I didn't shut that one down I just missed a good one but see the satellites too the satellites can pinpoint your location they're part of a grid too 
they can read your mind. And these are these mega sensors for an artificial intelligence. So they already know your thoughts. Um, you know, a lot too on police stations and hospitals, they have cell phone towers. Because a lot of these places are, there's Freemasons working there and they have centers and they're reading people's minds. They're mind controlling people at the fire halls, at the hospitals, at the police stations, at the hospitals. And these are the fusion centers. And in the fusion centers, they can read your mind there too. They have technology where they can look through your eyes. Um, these fusion centers are in every town. They have fusion centers in hospitals and police stations. This is in um, Britain, in the UK, and this is a mobile surveillance officer. And a mobile surve I'll just read it. Being a mobile surveillance officer, MSO, means every day is different. You could be out on foot in a car, and where you could, and where you are, and what you are doing depends on who you are following and why. So you're following people for a living. Blending into your surroundings will gather information and intelligence that will feed directly into the operation you are working on. They're fucking gang stalking. As a mobile surveillance officer, you will enjoy a huge variety every day and know that you are helping to keep your country safe. <laughs> gang stalking. All right? And this is from the MI5 website. So this is military intelligence five this is the military is hiring ordinary citizens to gang stalk people Isn't hey that crazy? They, they come in uh they on your neck oh, man we need some organite crystals we need the benefits copper crown we need all the mechanisms societies. possible what you can do what to look out for anyone you don't like <laughs> and I'm going to go into another one this is for Canada is hiring gang stalkers too they call them surveillance officer notice this one what they put right here important do not discuss your application with others including on social media besides your partner or close family members who should also be reminded about the need to be discreet? Why would you have to keep it secret? Because you're a gang stalker. Salary range starting from 61 to 74, and then it can goes up from there. And that says the the job summary: conducting discreet physical surveillance, researching and analyzing information pertaining pertaining to surveillance. Drafting reports, carrying out several tasks, and I get targeted by electromagnetic frequencies. And when I try and make videos, I get so tired and sick. So I'm trying my best, but they they attack you with these weapons. And it says, "This is um." For the New Zealand government, this is they're called um an operational cover officer, and this is uh, just a gang stalker. And listen to what it says here: Are you interested in helping keep your country safe? Can you keep a secret? Why would you have to keep a secret? You're working for the government. The government's keeping secrets, so it's gang stalkers in New Zealand. How to train to become a surveillance officer? Moving surveillance within an automobile fix. This like on foot. Here's a mobile. This is MI5. And this is Singapore. This is a uh, more gang stalking shit. The uh, gangster. You guys gotta let me know what you think about gang stalking. Talk it in the comments below. Me personally, man, once he starts speaking frequency and radio waves, man, it's um there's not really much that we can go off on though. So it's only no telling what type of technology that they're possibly hiding from us.
but death definitely makes you think about, you know, how to protect yourself, what type of servers you, you could possibly use, um, what type of organite crystal you might, you know, something. We need something to block these waves. But let's keep diving into this, man. As Father Time, and its symbology is evident everywhere you look. The planets are all within the black cube matrix. You're probably wondering, what are these black cubes? What do they symbolize? Why are they in every major city around the world? I'm here to tell you that this black cube represents the cube of Saturn, the very cube found on the North Pole of Saturn. The truth is far stranger than you might believe. In the occult realm, Saturn is known as Father Time, and its symbology is evident everywhere you look. The planets aren't what you believe they are, they're not what you've been told. Behind these seven energies that we call planets, there lies a far deeper meaning. The elites in power seem to worship Saturn, given that their symbols are pervasive. Take Michael Jackson's album cover, for instance. It features the word escape, set against Saturn's rings. What do you think he's trying to tell us? Venture into the world's secrets and you'll find a web of mysteries and esoteric knowledge hidden in plain sight. The Black Cube Matrix is one such enigma. The symbols are everywhere, from public sculptures in major cities to covert emblems in pop culture. Yet, only the initiated recognize them. When one gazes upon the prominent structures in places such as New York, London, and Tokyo, the recurrent theme of the Black Cube emerges, standing tall and unwavering. To the untrained eye, they might appear as mere architectural choices, but to those who are attuned to the esoteric world, it symbolizes a hidden truth. The Cube of Saturn, located on the north pole of the planet, is the very Black Cube that you see represented across our world. The cube is not merely a geometric shape, it is an emblem of power, an indicator of knowledge and dominion, and the nexus of the ancient and the modern. To understand this connection, one must delve into the occult significance of Saturn. Known in esoteric circles as Father Time, Saturn is depicted with his scythe, representing both creation and destruction. While many in the contemporary world see planets as mere celestial bodies, the occult knows them as energies, forces, and deities. Saturn is not just a planet, it is an embodiment of time, discipline, and cycles. But why the obsession with Saturn? The elite powers that be understand the significance of the energies these celestial bodies hold. They believe that by worshipping Saturn and tapping into its energy, they can harness its power. Evidence of this can be found in numerous symbols and emblems, corporate logos, movies, music albums, and even fashion. They're not simply representations, they're talismans. Take, for instance, Michael Jackson's album, Escape. The title itself implies a desire to break free, but what's more intriguing are the Saturn rings clearly depicted on the cover. Is it merely an aesthetic choice? Or was the King of Pop subtly communicating a deeper message? A cry for liberation from the very matrix we're discussing. And Michael Jackson isn't the only one. Numerous artists, filmmakers, and writers have woven Saturnian symbolism into their works, nudging the aware viewer towards a greater truth. However, to say that space isn't real would be an oversimplification. What's meant by this is that our understanding of space, inculcated by mainstream narratives, is limited and skewed. The cosmos is not just a vast emptiness dotted with celestial bodies, it's a canvas of energies, stories, and truths waiting to be deciphered. Let's unravel the significance of the seven energies we term planets. In the occult world, the number seven holds immense significance. There are seven chakras, seven ancient wonders of the world, and seven deadly sins. These planets are not just wandering celestial objects, they are the embodiment of seven fundamental energies that influence our world. The elites recognize this. Their obsession with these energies, especially Saturn, is not mere superstition. It's an understanding of the interconnectedness of the universe. 
Mercury, for instance, emits a unique frequency that influences quantum vibrations in our own atomic structures. These frequencies don't just carry messages, they resonate on a subatomic level, subtly altering electron behaviors, linking neural pathways, and affecting the very essence of thought transference. Venus, bathed in its radiant glow, emanates particle waves that interact with the magnetism of our world. Its pull affects more than just gravitational tides, it exerts force on the elemental magnetite found within living organisms, influencing biological attractions and the interconnected dance of life itself. Mars, with its iron-rich soil, releases a distinct cosmic radiation. This energy, detectable by the most sensitive of instruments, seems to stimulate our primal instincts. It is speculated that these radiations affect our adrenaline production and other biochemical pathways, evoking that innate drive within us. Jupiter, the colossal force in our solar system, emits a potent energy field that affects the spin of electrons in our environment. This spin manipulation, according to esoteric physicists, might be linked to the expansive and abundant feelings associated with this great planet. Saturn's ring system, beyond its visible beauty, scatters charged particles throughout its vicinity. These particles, when they interact with Earth's own magnetic field... Man, each of these planets has its vibrating on its own frequency so i just feel like there's definitely something more going on that they're not telling us especially when you look at the different frequencies that they're vibrating on there's definitely we're definitely on to something here for entertainment purposes of course do your own research on everything can influence our perception of time and the cyclical nature of our existence. Uranus, with its off-kilter axis, emits asymmetrical energy waves that challenge and disrupt the standard quantum patterns. This might be why, during specific Uranian alignments, there are noticeable shifts in innovation and revolutionary thinking. Neptune, the mystic of our solar system, sends forth subsonic frequencies. These frequencies are believed to resonate with our pineal gland, often called the third eye, potentially opening pathways to deeper realms of consciousness. When we shift our perspective from the mystical to the subatomic, we realize that the planets offer more than just symbolic energy. They engage with us on a quantum level, altering the very fabric of our being, intertwining science with the arcane, revealing the occult truths of our cosmos. There's an ancient saying, as above, so below. This age-old principle, echoing through the corridors of hermetic traditions, encapsulates the idea that our vast cosmos with its myriad patterns mirrors the intricate events on Earth. Such is the essence of the Black Cube and Saturnian energies, interweaving celestial and terrestrial realms, hinting at forces that shape not just our spiritual journey, but even pragmatic aspects of our lives, like our financial markets. J.P. Morgan, the titan financier, was no stranger to these connections. Many recall his statement, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. Far from a casual remark, it reveals Morgan's genuine belief in the ties between planetary movements and market ebbs and flows. He leaned on astrologers, tapping I didn't know he said that. wisdom to strategize in business, drawing connections from the stars to Wall Street. Speak are all. Let's see if I can find. Us have dabbled in traditional astrology. I recently stumbled upon a program that dives into moon readings. Its simplicity belies its accuracy have dabbled in traditional astrology, I recently stumbled upon a program that dives into moon readings. Its simplicity belies its accuracy. Without exaggerating, its result us have dabbled in traditional astrology, I recently stumbled upon a program that dives into moon readings. 
Its simplicity belies its accuracy. Without exaggerating, its result felt almost uncannily on point. It makes one wonder about the depths of celestial influence. For the curious among you, there's a link in the description, but go there after watching this video. Now, Raymond Merriman. A stalwart in financial astrology today brings ancient practices to contemporary tables. With an impressive career spanning decades, Merriman's work bridges the celestial with the economic, gaining nods of respect even from skeptics. Taking a step back, the overarching narrative is hard to ignore. The Black Cube Matrix and Saturnian energy are not mere esoteric symbols. They rippled through our society, influencing everything from our buildings to our bank accounts. Morgan's legacy is proof that some elite figures don't just understand these connections, they harness them. In conclusion, for those with eyes to see and ears to hear, the universe whispers its secrets. Beyond just spiritual introspection, these cosmic energies seep into our daily grind. Peering beyond the surface, there's a vast tapestry of interconnectedness waiting for us to unravel its mysteries. It's an invitation, urging us to look up, connect the dots, and harness the boundless. The moon has long stood as a beacon, casting its silvery light across cultures, religions, and secret societies. Its pull reaches not just the ocean's tides, but seeps into the human psyche and our physiological rhythms. An ancient power, it is deeply woven into the fabric of our beliefs. Consider menstruation, or moonstruation, a monthly cycle echoing the moon's own wax and wane. This phenomenon, which happens exclusively during the fertile years, held symbolic potency in bygone cultures. The menstrual blood, often perceived with a mix of awe and trepidation, has perhaps influenced the use of red ochre by our forefathers. Even today, rituals and practices surrounding menstruation persist, reflecting age-old beliefs. This reverence for the menstrual cycle might be why events like the Witch's Sabbath were intricately linked to lunar phases, painting the moon in strokes of mystery and reverence. Delve deeper, and the Sabbath's significance becomes even clearer. Once the heart rest of the moon, this day was co-opted by the Jews and later the Christians, shifting it towards a more solar and masculine deity. This transition also brought about a shift from the matriarchal 13-month lunar calendar, with its symbolic 13 zodiac houses, to the solar 12-month structure. A subtle nuance, but these 12 houses are evocative of the 12 zodiac signs, a potent parallel to Jesus and his 12 disciples, hidden figures in the dance of celestial worship. Astrotheology, or... And I read somewhere, if you want to go a little bit deeper, that all the zodiac signs originated from something else before. So if you look at Scorpio, Virgo, Leo, that those stars weren't originally created. So we can say, oh, that look at that Scorpio. Oh, look at that little dipper. You know, maybe it was some type of ancient language. But you definitely want to do your research and see if you can find it. Let's carry on. The theology of stars is the ancient study of these celestial patterns and their divine implications. The concealed number 13, the hidden month, is a testament to the Earth Mother's power and significance. It's in the very fabric of religious foundations, Christ as the Sun, Mary's ties to the Moon, and the Twelve Disciples as the Zodiac. This lunar influence extends to the deities worshipped across cultures, Aphrodite, Ishtar, Isis. While their names may differ due to regional nuances, they are essentially manifestations of the same energy, the Gnostic Sophia, or Wisdom. Secret societies have been the guardians of these lunar secrets, sheltering them through ages, even as they skirmished or assimilated with dominant solar cults. The profound impact of the moon on human psychology and physiology isn't just a stuff of legends. Terms like lunatic drawn from the moon underscore this connection. Historical data reveals patterns linked to lunar cycles, higher incidence of kleptomania, arson, and even driving mishaps during full moons. 
rituals such as the Jewish Passover and the Christian Easter are scheduled around lunar events, hinting at the moon's profound influence on our traditions. Intriguingly, the lunar cycle also appears to have sway over births. A 1948-1957 New York study of 500,000 births indicated more births during a waning moon. Even in remote Germany, births seemed to align with high tides as the moon passed overhead. Eugen Jonas in the 1960s delved into the lunar influences on ovulation, boosting contraception's effectiveness astonishingly. However, it isn't just humans that are impacted. Frank Brown's groundbreaking research unveiled that creatures ranging from oysters to rats are governed by lunar cycles. Despite initial skepticism from the scientific community, Brown's findings illuminated the omnipresent lunar influence on Earth's inhabitants. In the dance of cosmic bodies, the ancients discerned gods shaping their destinies. Today, as we unravel the moon's mysteries, we find a tapestry of secrets where each thread holds a story of reverence, power, and balance. The celestial realm, a vast expanse where the Saturn, the Moon, and countless other bodies reside, seems most active under the cloak of night. This nocturnal setting, deep and inscrutable, offers a backdrop against which the dance of these celestial bodies is most vivid. The Saturnine chronology, the moon's enigmatic waltz, and even the silent whisper of stars. All of these narratives unfold primarily in the silent hours of the dark. This preponderance of celestial activity at night prompts us to ponder, is there an inherent darkness or shadow in these events and energies? The ancient pagan traditions, after all, were deeply connected with night. They revered the moon and other celestial bodies, drawing energy and power from the cosmos during nighttime rituals and ceremonies. This association with the pagan energies, often misunderstood or even feared in various cultures, raises questions about the nature of the forces we tap into when we attune ourselves to the cosmos. However, to hastily equate the night and its mysteries with something sinister would be a gross oversimplification. The universe, in all its vastness, holds a balance. Just as there's day, there's night. For every right, there's left. This duality is inherent in the very fabric of existence. It's a reminder that all energies, be they from the sun or the farthest star, emanate from the same divine source. I choose to believe that everything, every planet, star, and nebula, is an expression of the divine. If we view the cosmos through this lens, then every nocturnal mystery becomes a chapter in a grand tale written by the hands of the Creator. This perspective invites us to love and embrace both the light of day and the secrets of night, understanding that they are two sides of the same cosmic coin. In the end, as we peer into the depths of the universe, seeking understanding and connection, it's essential to approach these mysteries with an open heart, for in the balance of day and night, right and left, light and shadow, we find the true essence of the You definitely, you definitely want to do your research and use your own discernment. Always carry that sword and shield. And always look for the truth. Let's dive a little bit deeper, y'all. We're going deep space nine. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Now unto him. Step right up, my friend. Step right.
They knew this in 1932, y'all. I'll die. Me, oh my. Don't be shy. Folks, the limit is the sky. I bid 40. Mm. Hmm. 40 is the bid so far. Park your car where you are. Hitch your wagon to a star. I'll bid 20. 20 is bid. Going. Going. Gone. I got them. I got them the whole world time got. <laughs> gimme, gimme. For oh, the money, the money, huh? The cash. Ooh, yeah. Gimme, yeah, gimme the cash. It. Thank you. Uh, so what, uh, what is he about? Yeah, uh? mm. I'll pull gravity out of the height and see what happens. Heliocentric <laughs> model. knew about it back in 1932 y'all boy oh boy are the pieces starting to add up y'all I got a couple more I want to bring it around home for us I guess this is Saturn, according to NASA. I don't know how I feel about those back there. 
but just for entertainment purposes. Ask what our stars really are. What are stars made of? Just bear with me, I will explain you. Stars are a light and energy which vibing with frequencies with a geometric shape. But what you see from below, you see them just shining. As above, so below. Everything you see up in space, one version must be below. You may ask, so where are them on Earth? Good question. Look around you and ask yourself where they could be high. Okay, you forgot. I will remind you. Listen up. If we tell you that star is you, within you, your consciousness, your soul, do you believe it? Each star is one soul, one consciousness. You are zero and one. You are nothing but everything. You are stars and the universe and we are multiverse together. That is interesting.
all right y'all if y'all made it this far drop the 100 in the comments man i really enjoyed this one man be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already and yeah man we we had to go deep space nine on this one see what's really going on with saturn see what's really going on with these stars man jump in the comments and tell me what y'all think and as always i'll see you guys on the next one and thanks for hopping on these dark waters with your boy i'm out peace